most of the mechanical design engineers struggle to finalize tolerance values for given dimensions in engineering drawings. My name is Kevin Kutto and in this video we are going to understand step by step process to finalize tolerance value for any given dimension. If you like this content help us by subscribing to the YouTube channel. Before we begin this session and before we try to understand all the steps involved, you need to have knowledge of all these subjects. Otherwise, these steps will not make sense to you. So you should know about general tolerances, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, tolerance stack-up analysis, process capability study, and engineering fits. If you have knowledge of all these areas, it will help you to finalize the tolerance values for any given dimension into your design. Also, let's keep in mind that all these steps listed here are representing the worst case scenario where critical dimensions are involved. For many of the dimensions, we might have to follow only some of the steps mentioned here in order to finalize the tolerance value for those dimensions. With this understanding, let's begin. The first step is preparation of 3D CAD geometry for the design concept where we model out important functional features like locator, boss, holes, ribs, interfacing surfaces, snap fits, dog house, slot, etc. Each feature has certain function to deliver in the assembly. Like in this example, we have a red part and blue part. This red part is going to touch the blue part at its side and it is going to rest on this face. And in that condition, these lugs should assemble with the holes. So we have to prepare the CAD model and geometry for these two parts first. Now that we prepare the CAD model, the second step involves identification of datum features and critical functional features. Now datums constrain some or all of six degrees of freedom of the part based upon the function to deliver. Now we know that in GDNT, primary datum stabilizes or orients the part for assembly, whereas secondary and tertiary datums locate the part for assembly. Identifying datums as per the function is very crucial step in finalizing the tolerance value. Like in this example, this surface of the red part and this surface of the blue part are going to touch each other and that's why they are our primary datum features. Also, this red part is going to touch the blue part on this side and this side. So this side will be our secondary datum feature whereas this side will be our tertiary datum feature. And the crucial features in this are these two lugs in the blue part and these two holes in the red part because they are going to assemble with each other. Not only that, this face of the red part and this face of the red part, also this face of the blue part and this face of the blue part are also crucial. If there is any profile variation happening here on this red part and blue part, will not get the right interface here. The third step involves addition of basic CAD dimensions of all functional features from the datums, also dimensions between critical features if they are interrelated. So basically we establish dimensional relationships of critical features from the datum. Like in this case, the dimensions of these two lugs from each other and the holes from each other and also their relation with respect to datums is very crucial. So we have to identify that and we have to add those dimensions into the CAD geometry. The fourth step involves understanding of geometric relationship of features with respect to datums as well as on the features themselves. We need to identify form of each feature as well as location, orientation, profile or runout wherever needed by the function. Like in this example, the primary datum will be this face. This primary datum needs to be controlled in the form. So we need to control the form of this face. Similarly, secondary and tertiary datums should be perpendicular to primary datum and each other. Not only that, these two lugs should be controlled in location with respect to each other and with respect to our primary, secondary and tertiary datum. And by primary, I mean the perpendicularity with respect to primary datum. Same way, the hole should be perpendicular to this face and their location with respect to each other as well as the side faces is also very important. The fifth step involves 
identifying geometric characteristic symbols, modifying symbols, material conditions as per geometric relationship identified in the fourth step. Basically, we begin to finalize feature control frame in the GDNT. Here, the secondary datum and tertiary datum has to be controlled in perpendicularity. So, I can create a feature control frame with perpendicularity. Also, I want to control the surface variation on this. So, I can apply flatness in the feature control frame. And I also want to control these two lugs as a pattern. So, I can control them with the help of composite control. Composite control controls the location of these two lugs as a pattern from datums as well as their relationship with respect to each other and the perpendicularity with respect to this datum as well. Now that we have got dimensions, geometric characteristic symbols, it's time to apply general tolerance to each dimension using ISO 286-1 or ISO 2768 standards. General tolerances are easily achievable tolerances for given dimension and IT grades. IT grades are international tolerance grades as per manufacturing process. Finer processes have lower IT grades, whereas rougher processes have higher IT grades. IT grades range from IT1 to IT80. So once we know the basic value, that means dimension and IT grade, that means manufacturing process, we can choose the tolerance value. I have created a separate video on this topic which will explain how to select a general tolerance with the example. The link is provided in the description. You can watch that. Interestingly, most of the dimensions and tolerances are finalized in this step itself unless dimension is contributing into the stack up analysis. Seventh step involves calculation of virtual conditions, resultant conditions, inner boundaries, outer boundaries as per the feature control frame on the feature of size to ensure that mating features are assembling in the worst case. To understand this step, you need to have good knowledge of what is virtual condition, resultant condition, inner boundaries and outer boundaries. You can understand them as the worst case boundaries of male and female features and we have to compare them for the assembly. The eighth step involves preparation of preliminary engineering drawings with all general tolerances and geometrical controls which we have identified so far. In the ninth step, we begin tolerance stack-up analysis. Now note that all the dimensions and tolerances in the stack-up analysis chain needs to be derived from the preliminary engineering drawings. We need to select worst case or statistical method based upon the number of contributors into the chain as well as if the manufacturing is mass production. In case some of the critical dimensions and tolerances in the stack up are just carry forward from the existing manufacturing process or existing parts, we should collect actual manufacturing data and plug in plus minus three sigma tolerances or statistical tolerances into the stack up analysis to make the results more realistic. That is our 10th step. In the 11th step, we analyze process capability or CP and process capability index that means CPK as per the stack up chain and the tolerance on the dimensions. CP, CPK target values can vary between 1.33 to 2 based upon whether the function is secondary function, primary function or safety and regulatory function. Our stack up needs to pass both CP, CPK targets in order to be acceptable as a good stack up. If we fail to meet process capability and process capability targets, change dimensional chain or change contributing tolerances. Sometimes we can even open up the tolerances to reduce the cost of manufacturing and still meet the functional requirement. So this 12th step is all about optimization of the tolerances and dimensional chain. In the 13th step, we identify critical dimensions and tolerances from the stack up analysis in our engineering drawings so that our manufacturers use statistical process to control those critical dimensions and tolerances. Critical dimensions and tolerances means even slight change into that is going to affect our stack up results adversely and that's why we have to control these dimensions and tolerances into the manufacturing process with the statistical process. Once we get first tool samples and 100% inspection data from the manufacturers, specifically in the cases where the tools are involved, 
we need to update our engineering drawings to accommodate actual dimensional variations in the tooled up samples. Why we have to accommodate this variation? Why can't we just modify the tool? Because our first attempt will be to capture all this variation into the drawing. We prefer to minimize any change into the tool because it's a costly affair and time consuming affair. In the 14th step, our final engineering drawing with the final dimensions and tolerances before production is ready and we can begin the production with that. As I said earlier, based upon type of process, geometry we are using on the part, we can omit some of the steps. In many of the cases, we may not require to do tolerance stack-up analysis. So those steps may not be relevant in such parts. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, subscribe to the YouTube channel.